All right, today I'm going to be working on his uh, right hand, and then when I get done with that, I'll texture her uh, shawl, and that will probably be as much as I'm going to do on this piece. And uh, I'll be taking a couple of days and trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. All right, be right back. All right, what I'm doing is I'm doing the hand because it's going to be hanging out there by itself. I'm going to do the hand out of Super Sculpty just because uh, it holds its shape better when it hardens up or stiffens up. It won't make much difference once the uh, clay is cast in bronze. It'll all look the same. I really thought this out over the weekend about how I was going to do this. I was showing in Caesars Casino in Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe, many years ago, back in the uh, late 80s, I think. And I was sculpting a uh, cowboy, I think. And uh, I had a gentleman, a young man who was from Mexico. He couldn't speak English. Uh, but he asked me for a piece of clay. I gave it to him and he sculpted me a hand with a nail in it. And I never thought, forgot that, how he did that. He couldn't speak English, but through his uh, sculpture of a hand, he said all he needed to say. All right, it's time to take this hand off. which wasn't a really hand, but anyway. All right, I heated up the uh, clay, or the uh, wire, and I'm just gonna press this up into the clay. There we go. I gotta shake the hand a little bit. <clears throat> I 
I'll put uh, knuckles and everything on it at another time, but not now. I'm going to do the last thing on this guy for now and I'm just going to paint the super sculpty to look like the clay so that uh, when people see the picture of the uh, cowboy and the cow the cowgirl or the uh, ranch girl or his love interest they won't be asking, why is his hand blue? <laughs> now when the paint dries, it'll look just like clay. So when I get ready to take this to the boundary, I'll cut the hand here and just leave the fingers and the thumb on the fretboard and uh, that way they can take that and slide it out and make a mold of that separate that'll cut down a lot on the cost of producing this piece all right now it's time to work on her shawl and get ready to uh, finish it off Just filling in some of the rough areas that uh, come about when you're sculpting. Okay, again I go back with my uh, tool here that I got from Ken's Tools. Uh, with little metal rods in it, about four of them, and, that, and just round it off at the bot, top ends of them so that you get some kind of texture. Like I said before, Ken's Tools is a well-known supplier of sculpting tools. Ken's Tools dot com and uh, movie companies use these tools and uh, this is how they get the uh, texture on dinosaurs and lizards and strange creatures <laughs> this is good enough for photograph work now to advertise it to send out pictures to the galleries to see if they'd be interested in promoting it I'm using Ronsonol again to uh, take down the roughness or the sharpness of this uh, texturing. Just a little. I don't want it overdone, the texturing. I just want it to indicate something different than the cotton dress. I'll be doing something to the base eventually, but not uh, this week. And I've got to take care of a few little incidentals when I, if I do sell a copy of this. So, all right. Good night, everybody, and I'll see you next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.